All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Battalion Chief Jeff Hernandez, for those of you who don't know me. And welcome. Appreciate everybody coming here today. We're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to have one of our new recruits, Colby Saucedo, come on up and lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, so again, good afternoon. Welcome to our fifth annual uh, award ceremony. Appreciate everybody being here. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules because I know we're all very busy, especially this time of year as we start approaching the holidays, things start getting really hectic. So it means a great deal to all of us to have you guys here. Um, today we're gonna celebrate some amazing accomplishments and milestones that the City of Santee Fire Department's team has accomplished over the last two years because we didn't have an award ceremony last year due to uh, COVID restrictions. All of you here today are part of our extended fire family. We spend so much time at work and we work such unique hours and in such unique situations that are very challenging that our work truly becomes a home away from home. The people that we work with, they're not our coworkers, they're part of our family. Um, that's why the fire stations frequently refer to as a firehouse. It more accurately reflects what happens behind those doors from daily cleaning of the bathroom to cooking meals, from necessary report writing to disagreements like you'd have with your siblings. All that stuff happens in the firehouse, just like it does at home. These men do amazing thing every single day and we don't acknowledge it often enough. So that's what today is about. What most of you might describe it as extraordinary can often be described as, quote, just another day on the job in our world. What does the word job mean? Well, if you go to the East Coast, a lot of times they'll say the word, yeah, we had a good job, meaning they had a big fire, okay? But over here, what it typically means and what it means throughout the, the uh, American Fire Service is it just refers to this career, the career in the fire service. But it also means so much more. It's truly a lifestyle, and there's really nothing else in the world like it. It's a tough road to get started on. You can ask any of the new recruits that are sitting here. We've got quite a few sitting here in our, in our midst today and we're gonna introduce you to all of them. But it's, it's really a, a major accomplishment to finally get hired with the fire department. It's a, it's a long road to plow. But once you finally get to slip on those turnout boots and sit in a fire engine and run your first call and drive down the road with lights and sirens blaring, it's an amazing feeling. When you finally get to wear the uniform and that badge, it represents a lot. It represents our pride in the organization. It represents the trust of the public. It represents our duty to help other people. It represents all those that came before us and helped build this great organization that we're all part of. It represents all the tradition of the fire service. And when we put on that uniform, we not only represent ourselves, we not only represent the city of Santee, but the fire service as a whole. Because when you see things on the news and you say, oh, a firefighter here did this, that reflects positively or negatively on all of us. We all embody the job when we put on that uniform. And with that, I'd like to take a quick moment and acknowledge some distinguished guests that are out in the audience. You know, we've got several, excuse me, I don't know if they're all here, I've only seen one, but we've got Councilmember Koval. Is there any other? I didn't see anybody else pop in. So we've got Councilmember Koval today, so we appreciate you attending. Uh, we've also got our city clerk, Annette Ortiz and James Jeffries. Uh, sitting in the back here. Um, I haven't seen any other department directors. I'm missing anybody? Um, we thank you all for your continued support of the fire department. Uh, I also need to acknowledge several individuals that are critical to the functioning of our fire department. Uh, in the back, we've got our two mechanics that literally keep the rubber on the road, and without them, we can't do our job. And they're not just for the fire department, they keep a fleet of about 75 vehicles working for the entire city. So in the back, we've got our mechanics, Jeremy Battisti and Mario Camacho. So we, we owe them a big, a big debt because they've got a lot of work to do and it's just the two of them. 
We also need to acknowledge our, what I like to refer to as our Wizards of Oz. The people that really keep this department running and the people that keep us in check, because I know that I screw up on a very regular basis and I have to go groveling to um, people up in our administration office and say, hey, I screwed this up. Can you tell, help me with it? Can you fix it? So the people that we've got working up in our office is our office assist assistant, uh, Evelyn Lee, our administrative secretary, Wendy Stratton, and management analyst, Chief Venus McFadden. Uh, they all do a tremendous amount of work for them, and we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. So I want to acknowledge that and give them all a round of applause. So with that, I'd like to uh, bring uh, Council Member Laura Cobalt forward. She'd like to have an opening statement. Thank you, Chief Her Battalion Chief Hernandez. And thanks for asking me to speak today. I'm truly honored to um, speak in front of all of you today, and I promise I will keep it short. Um, I didn't write a speech because I, I don't like to give speeches. I like to look at people and talk. So um, what I'll say first is, um, on behalf of the mayor and the city council, I want to thank everybody um, on the, the force for all they do for the city. But really, it's on behalf of the citizens of Santee that I'm representing today. Uh, I personally live on Willow Grove, and I know most of you are familiar with Willow Grove. So um, every day, thank you for what you do in my community. But um, the, the big fire we had, uh, Gosh, it got right up to fences. When was that? Thanksgiving? Was it, it was actually on Thanksgiving, and uh, you guys knocked that down. I think it only got 18 acres, and what, what a testament to the job you do. Um, as city council people, we can, we're either voluntold or we can choose to be on committees in the community, and I asked to be on CSA 69 and Heartland Communications, and I serve as the current chair for CSA 69. It's because I have a passion for public service, but also so do you. And I, I want to give whatever skills I might have and, and help enhance our department here. And um, you know, I, I'm elected in, through 2024, so that's my commitment to all of you. And um, I just want to say, let's get on with the show because we the stars are in the audience. And um, thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for your service. Let's never mention that I had to lower this thing after Council of the Law spoke. Never to be spoken of again. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be a picture at some point. So uh, before I get going, I want to make a couple of, of acknowledgments. Again, my name is John Garland, the fire chief here. Um, I'm very proud to uh, represent the department. Mayor Mento called specifically, um, he was going to miss this, but specifically he wanted to, be to mention a couple things. And that is, he is very proud, and we should all be proud. Over the last couple years has been difficult at best, and I'm glad it hasn't been a theme of this ceremony, but I'd be remiss if we didn't mention it. The last year and a half has been very hard. It's been hard for all of us. It's been hard for our firefighters. Early on in this pandemic, um, policies, the way we do things were changing almost daily and it was very, very difficult to stay up and it was very, very difficult to keep a smile on your face. Uh, Mayor Minto wanted me to pass on his, his sentiments as how proud he is of every member of our fire department. He also mentioned several threshold incidents over the last year. We've had several large fires, we've had the plane crash, we've had a lot of things going on. We had civil unrest, the pandemic, uh, the list goes on and on. And on top of that, we've had the worst fire season in Northern California in the history of the state. We had members deployed for, I think, eight weeks total, um, more than we've ever deployed in, in the history of this fire department, as far as I know. Our folks were stretched thin and worked hard, and we are very proud of, of each and every one of them. So on behalf of the mayor, thank you all. I want to make a couple acknowledgements of recent activity. Um, I made mention to uh, our fire marshal, Chris Workman, and our, op our public works manager, Sam Bransbury, as I walked in the door. Something happened pretty significant 
on uh, Thanksgiving, the fire over off of uh, Ramsgate. Recently, we declared a state of emergency within the city to do some brush clearing. And we tasked the fire marshal and Sam to go out and, and find all the residences that were in the area of brush. Um, they made it happen, they identified the areas, the city allocated the funds, Sam put together the, the contracts and they went and cleared brush and three days later uh, fire burned right up to the to the cut line of those homes and in my opinion after walking the area I think you guys made a significant impact to the residents in that area so uh, or before we get going uh, a quick congratulations and thank you Sam and Krista. Yeah. So uh, uh, you're gonna have an opportunity to hear me speak a couple times, but before I get going, I, I think the theme I wanna stick with today is family. Uh, we talk a lot about family and we're going to expand on what it means to be part of this fire family. A good friend of mine recently told me that uh, it was missing in some of our written values. In some of the values we created over the many, many years ago, the term family, we've taken it for granted that we call each other a fire family. And it's not in our values, and I expect soon it will be. But uh, I was reminded of that, and it made me think of what does that mean? And uh, tonight, that's going to be a recurring theme as I, as I present a couple different things. But for, for right now, family is special. This job is hard, and it's, it's gratifying, and it gives back, and we all do it for a reason. We love it. It's who we are. But it's hard. It's, it's easy when you see the fire truck driving down the road to wave and, and it's really nice for us to see that. But for everybody in this room, it's important to realize it's a very hard job. Our firefighters are tasked with, with very, very difficult situations. There's no way to sterilize this job. There's some glory involved. They do wonderful jobs but it's important to realize it is a very hard job and they're, they're exposed to things nobody in this world should ever be exposed to. It's just part of the job and uh, it's important to note that because the empathy from us. Sometimes a hug, sometimes a wave. I know for me, away from the community when I'm in uniform, um, a thank you. It seems innocuous, but it's just, it's just amazingly impactful to a lot of us. So. Um, from me to everybody that wears the uniform, present and former, Chief Rottenberg, I see you over there, um, a, a deep debt of gratitude and thank you to each and every one of you. Um, so going back to the family theme, with that understood, our phones are always on. And when I say that, when I say that I mean every single person in uniform, our phones are on. When things get rough, you need a friend, you need somebody to talk to, it doesn't matter if it's 2 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the evening. Every person wearing this uniform, your phones are always on and I can guarantee everybody in this room feels the same way. Um, I'm going to ask real quick for all the family to stand up. I know there's uh, uh, almost everybody in this room. If you're a family, direct family of a firefighter, please stand up. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you. You're on this journey with us. Um, you are sort of the unsung heroes in the lives of our firefighters. You are the ones that they come home to. You're the ones that give the hugs. You're the ones that are the rocks at home. When our firefighters deploy for many weeks at a time, you're the ones that hold down the forts. And I don't think that can be overstated at all. Um, I'm so grateful for it. I know my wife Deborah out there um, has been just such a rock in my life to the point where I can come home with tears in my eyes and she'll give me a hug. She won't ask any questions. That's a heavy responsibility and for every one of you that are standing right now um, we owe a debt of gratitude and thank you. And I'd like a round of applause for all of you. So again, uh, thank you all for being here. We're gonna move into the next um, section, which is our new hire badge pinning. So if I could have uh, Carissa, if you come up, give me, a, give me a hand handing these out. 
What we're going to do is we're going to announce all of our new hires in the last two years. Uh, when you guys come up, please uh, come up and then stay up here until after the swearing in. So our first new hire, uh, Kyle Adamson, who will be pinned by his girlfriend, Nicole. She wasn't able to attend yet. Oh, you're going to do it? Yeah, she, yeah. All right. Well, Chief Fernandez will be pinning Kyle Adamson. Kyle was born and raised in Tustin, California. He graduated from University of Oregon with a bachelor's degree in advertising. Kyle currently resides in Mission Beach with his girlfriend and enjoys surfing and travel. Congratulations. Stay up here. Antonio Cabrera. Antonio is originally from El Centro, California. He had obtained his fire science degree from Miramar College along with his EMT certification. Antonio is beyond excited to have now landed his dream job as a firefighter paramedic with the City of Santee Fire Department. Uh, Antonio's mom, Virginia, will be pinning. Thank you. California. He obtained his associate's degree in fire science from Moreno Valley Community College. He graduated from Insta, Insta College Paramedic Program in 2018. He's worked as a single role paramedic for the last two years before being hired by Santee. You are being pinned by your mom, Lori. She's awake. Sorry. <laughs> it's Rima. Oh. <laughs> Cody Reddick. Where's Cody? Oh, there it is. And Cody will be pinned by his wife, Christina. Cody grew up in Cathedral City, California. He graduated from paramedic school from West Med College in 2015. Cody currently resides in Santee with his wife and four-month-old son. I can hold Michael Soto. Michael grew up in Oceanside, California. California. He graduated from NCTI in Riverside, um, the paramedic program, in 2018. He currently resides in San Marcos with his wife, Sierra, and their dog, Nico. <laughs> he will be pinned by his wife, Sierra. Lewis Ewing. Ewing. There it is. Lewis grew up in, in what I call God's country, Crest, California. Lewis has recently completed a paramedic school at Emsta in 2021 after completing his internship with Santee Fire Department. Uh, we're very proud of that. Lewis is currently married and enjoys camping, snowboarding, and woodworking. He will be pinned by his wife, Lauren.
Colby Sacido. Colby grew up in Ojai, hopefully I'm saying that right, Ojai, California. Colby has earned his bachelor's degree in global studies from, from the Maritime Affairs and Communications. Let me say that again. A bachelor's degree in global studies and maritime affairs. That's a mouthful. From California State University Maritime Academy in uh, Vallejo, California in 2018. Colby currently lives in Oceanside, California. And he has given me the honor of pinning him today. So real quick before we move on to the swearing in, this, this day marks a, a big day in the lives. Although some of these folks have already started, uh, they're already on the job. Uh, Colby and uh, Luis are just starting the academy. They've had a couple shifts in. Um, this marks a, the beginning of not only your careers, but your, your family's careers with the fire department. Again, going back to the family theme, you're in this together your wives, your family, your girlfriends, um, you are in this together. And, and remember that, um, lean on your, your family, lean on your fire family. Um, whatever you need, every single member in this department is there for you. We all have somebody in our careers that gave us a hand up, that gave us a head start, gave us some sort of help in our careers and to help us move forward. And that doesn't stop as you promote, as you get hired, um, every one of us has something to give back and we owe a debt of gratitude. So reach out, you guys will be the same. You will be there when somebody needs you. When you see somebody on the street that says they want to be a firefighter, you will be now the one that is able to help them get ahead in their career. Um, we talk a lot about our hiring practices over the years and one thing we're very, very proud of is we hire character and teach skill. That has been a recurring theme for the last four or five years. Uh, we used to, in many, many years past, only hire the, the folks that came in with a ton of school and academies and, and things of that nature, which worked out really well for us. And we have since changed a little bit in, uh, in this day and age to hiring people based on their character. We have some amazing firefighters in this department that can they, a firefighter with the right attitude and physical ability, our fire captains and our firefighters can train them to learn everything they need to know, but what they can't train them is to have a good attitude. They can't train them to be a good human being, and that's what we're focusing on these days, and we've done a fantastic job as evidence from the, the firefighters behind me. So with that, congratulations to you all. And, uh, Wish you all the best in the years to come. So, thank you. With that, I'm going to introduce Annette Ortiz, our city clerk, to do the swearing in. Hello, congratulations, gentlemen. Uh, raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. So, I state your name. I, I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. I further swear that I will uphold. I further swear that I will uphold the Santee Fire Department Code of Conduct. The Santee Fire Department Code of Conduct. Oh, thank you.
Was that me or? That was me. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, I'm going to introduce Kyle Moyner, Battalion Chief, to go over the last two academies. Can I raise the Oh, uh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chief. Good afternoon, my name is Kyle Moyner. I'm the Battalion Chief on A Division and responsible for training and safety. Um, I do want to uh, point out that we have hired some outstanding individuals, uh, the men that were up here right now. We are very uh, grateful and lucky to have you and be part of our organization. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the process of when you're hired and uh, what it entails for the training. Uh, first and foremost, Chief Garland mentioned it, it starts with hiring the right people, which we've done. Uh, and then really we, we set the foundation during the academy. So. Academies 25 and 26, uh, 25 um, completed about six, seven months ago, and 26 is going on right now. They're four week long academies, and uh, we ask a lot. Uh, we ask a lot of the recruits, but we also ask a lot of our staff. So I do want to recognize the work that everyone puts in on a day to day basis, helping get our new people trained. We, uh, we ask a lot. We have a captain that is dedicated one week at a time to the academy, but we have a lot of assistance from our engine companies, truck companies, ambulances. They assist with the academies during the day, and then they respond to emergencies at night, and then they re repeat the process the next day. So it's a lot, and they do it with a smile on the face, and uh, we appreciate the work and effort that they put into it. Uh, so thank you guys for that. So uh, during the, uh, the academies that um, we mentioned, 25 and 26, they're four week long academies, and we've gotten a little innovative and creative over the uh, years as they've uh, challenged <laughs> us. And uh, we've really thrown a lot to it. Uh, we'll do hose lays, we'll teach the recruits how to use their breathing apparatus, we'll throw ladders, we'll actually get cars delivered to the station, we'll practice doing extrications, rescues. Uh, we will do live fire training. We'll actually um, and engage in, in live fires. Uh, it's a lot. We ask our people uh, to show up early, to stay late. We give them quizzes every, uh, every morning, tests, and um, it's not for everyone, but it sets a foundation. It helps us uh, become a good department, uh, the, the department that we want to be to uh, meet the needs of the community, which uh, we do well at. So um, we really uh, just want to recognize the uh, recruits and thank everyone uh, that's uh, a part of it. And uh, I'm going to play a short video here that Matt Brown, Engineer Matt Brown, put together. So thanks, Matt. Uh, just gives you a better uh, look at the academy rather than listen to me talk. So I want to play this video, and thanks, Matt. Soto, I'm 26 years old and I'm from Oceanside, California. Hello, my name is Cody Reddick. I'm 26 and I'm from Santee, California. Joseph Reamer, 32 years old, from Riverside, California. My name is Kyle Adamson. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Tustin, California. I'm Antonio Cabrera. I'm 28 years old and I'm originally from El Centro, California.
Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Next up, uh, I'm going to have Aaron Bagley come up, and he's going to uh, move on to the Civilian Awards. The time to Aaron Bagley. Good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate you guys coming out today. It means a lot to us. Um, I'm going to recognize a few of our citizens today, and um, I know at least one couldn't make it, but um, can we get Dav David Antico, Michael Keeley, Amanda Nelson, Sean Purvis, and Allison Ray? You guys got the two of you here? And Sean. Okay, and Sean. Um, so, as firefighters, we're charged with protecting our community. Life, environment, property, our, our community, it's up to us, it's our job. Um, but s similar to the sentiment, they say it takes more than a village to raise a child, it takes more than us to, to keep this community safe. It takes a team effort, it takes a community members, it takes people like, like um, the ones we have standing up here. And that was highlighted for us on October 11th when a twin engine plane um, crashed into a UPS truck, several homes in Santee, set a large portion of a city block on fire. It was an insane scene, a tragic scene. Several people lost their lives. Um, it was an incredibly dramatic scene. Um, we had two of our residents stuck inside their house when that plane struck and they were they were injured but they they needed help and we weren't on scene and these the people standing before me here they sprung into action they saw this plane come down and they sprung into action they approached the house is there anybody home opening windows helping help one one woman outside a window they broke down a fence to help somebody outside of the uh, get out of their yard by the time we showed up the houses were completely engulfed in flame flames non survivable um, so, um, appreciate the team effort from our community to provide the safety of our citizens, and that's what happened. And that's that's you know, I'd say that's what we need in life in general is just people want to step up and help, and that's what happened. So, um, just like to recognize you guys. Um, we've got you've got them right here. Um, so we've got Sean. Thank you. Thank you. And I have I've spoken to you guys on the phone. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you in person. So we've got Amanda. Amanda. Yes. Amanda. Nice to meet you. Thank you, you very finally. much. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Mike. Allison. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Michael. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate appreciate you guys. Appreciate you being part of our team. And thank you. Got Justin Matsushita is going to give out our service work. Hello, uh, my name is Justin. I'm our deputy fire chief right now, and I have the honor of recognizing um, our employees that have hit this benchmarks. Our benchmarks, where we recognize for service awards, are every five years. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Uh, you would think that that would be enough for some people, but you'll see that the actually uh, it even goes beyond. 20 years when we get to our last one. Um, it's really a testament to, we don't, it doesn't seem like, five years doesn't seem like a lot, nor 10 or 15, but when you look at it in the context of those videos that you just saw or that video you saw, that was over a four week period. And if you think about that, giving that amount day after day, year after year, five years, 10 years, it's a tremendous amount of energy, um, a tremendous amount that you're giving of yourself to our citizens, your brothers and sisters in the fire service. And we're also, a tremendous amount we're taking away from your family, like Chief Garlow had already mentioned. So it really is a, a tremendous honor to be able to give out these, the recognition of all the sacrifices that many of our men and women have made um, to take to keep this community safe and um, It's a grind here. I'll tell you that we know it everyone that's been here. It's a lot of work Our training program is robust 
Our promotional processes are competitive. We run a lot of calls, and it's not for everybody. Like Chief Garla had mentioned, like Kyle Moyner had mentioned, Chief Moyner, it is not for everybody. But I tip my hat to all of you that have stayed, that have been here and served in the past, um, because we could not survive without the commitment of each and every person in this department. And you'll hear when we read off that people just don't come to work in this, in this department. They come to work and they contribute. They contribute a lot. Um, and it's not something that we ask specifically, it's just something that a lot of people do. And like I said, there's no way that we could deliver the high quality service without some of the sacrifices of our men and women before us. So uh, something a little different because this is two years, so some people have already received their, their five year, 10 year, 15 year recognition uh, last year. But with that being said, we still wanna bring them up just so we could uh, recognize you in front of your family and friends. And then for those that have hit those marks this year and didn't receive your pen and your plaque, uh, you'll be getting something as well. There's a few people, they're also getting recognized from promotions and we won't, uh, we're gonna give them their service award at the time of their promotion. So um, this gentleman is not here, but I do wanna still recognize him because like I said, it is, it's a pretty significant milestone to get to five years. So Brandon Gray uh, was hired in 2015. He was a member of our paramedic committee. He was instrumental in helping set up multiple derby cars. Uh, you could find him in his spare time helping out Jeremy in the shop. Um, and I, like I said, he's, he's not here today, but I still want to acknowledge uh, what he has done for this department. Uh, Mark Hartman is, Mark Hartman here? I didn't see him. Well, Mark isn't here as well, but Mark was hired in 2016. He's currently one of our paramedic committee members. Um, he's also a member of the union that does a tremendous amount of, of service to the community and helping take care of his brothers and sisters. He has been a paramedic mentor, a preceptor, and currently is one of our SCA, uh, SCBA technicians. And he just recently took one of our engineer exams and was successful in it. Uh, moving on, it's kind of a big jump from five years. The next up is our 15 years. So first up, Captain Aaron Doe, come on up. I know that you received your hardware last year. Yep. But Aaron was hired in 2005, promoted engineer in 2011, promoted captain in 2019. Uh, he was an intern here with the Santee Fire Department. Uh, he couldn't get enough of us, so he then applied, and he's been with us ever since 2005. He's been a former fire crew manager, and he's currently one of our training captains. And if anyone ever tries to keep up with this guy, uh, or can't keep up with this guy uh, when it comes to working out, uh, put your application back there because we want to hire you right now. He's a, he's a super stud. Uh, everything Aaron does is at an extremely high level, uh, extreme commitment to detail, and we thank you for your 15 years of service. Thank you. I haven't seen Dan Dodds. Dan Dodds isn't here, but he's also being recognized for 15 years of service. He's hired in 2006, promoted engineer in February of 2015. He's currently a chair of our Health, Safety, and Wellness Committee. He was instrumental in getting our first in alerting system, which has been monumental for us from a quality of life standpoint in the stations. And anyone knows Dan, Dan is extremely passionate about firefighter fitness and wellness, and the things that he has done have translated to making our lives better. And so, although he's not here, I do want to acknowledge and thank Dan for his 15 years of service as well. <laughs> Dustin Gerhardt, you can bring your girl. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin was hired in 2006, promoted to engineer in 2014, and to captain in 2019. He's a former Firefighter of the Year in 2014. He's managed our GIS pre-plans, um, overseeing, making sure that we have all of our information on our mobile data computers so when we arrive on scene, we can instantly see what we have in store for us from the building standpoint and where all the systems are that we need to plug into. Um, and he's currently responsible for helping to manage the EOC and some of our IT within our department. So thank you, Dustin, for your 15 years of service.
Scott Larson, I don't see him either. He would have thrown, they're not excited about the service awards, I, I guess. Yeah. But Scott is currently a captain with our department, hired in 2006, promoted to engineer in 2014, and then the captain in 2018. He managed pub ed for us. Um, he will be taking over managing our facilities here shortly. And he's also been a longtime member of our, the e and &E team that helps to negotiate for contracts on behalf of the union. So although he's not here, let's give Captain Larson a round of applause for his 15 years. Here. Engineer James Welsh, I know he's here. James was hired in 2006 and promoted to engineer in 2015. He currently manages Telestat, which is an incredibly sexy position, managing, uh, making sure that the staffing is taken care of for us. Uh, he helped to write our type three pumping manual for the engineer development guide and used to be a very integral member of our paramedic committee until he uh, moved on to just drive in the fire truck. So thank you, James, for your 15 years of service as well. The next jump is up to the 20 year mark. And first up is Jason Cousteau. Jason was hired in 2001. Him and I were academy mates together. Promoted to engineer in 2007, to captain in 2012. He's worked as a new hire mentor, paramedic preceptor, was on the paramedic committee for multiple years, firefighter of the year in 2007. He's been a training officer. Um, and now he's the one guy that you don't want to get an email from because that means that you have an outstanding, outstanding emphasis and uh, he's going to hunt you down. But Jason's done pretty much everything in our department. Um, always has a smile on his face, a pleasure to work with. So thank you for your 15 years of service, Jason. 20 years of service. Sorry about that, I just took off five years. <laughs> Most important thing was the PERS credit. That's what he was worried about. He's like, no, I got PERS reporting to do. Next up is uh, Battalion Chief Jeff Hernandez. As stated, Jeff got his hardware last year, right? But Jeff was hired in 2000, held every rank up to the position of Battalion Chief, Firefighter of the Year in 2002. He's currently our Logistics Services Chief, our Fleet Manager that helps to oversee those 75 vehicles that Jeremy and, uh, is, is charged with taking care of. Um, and he's also one of our IT specialists. One thing I can say about Jeff is Jeff is a jack of all trades. Jeff has helps out in so many ways. If I were to list off all the things that Jeff does, I, we would be here for quite a while. Um, but similar to what I said about Aaron, Jeff is an attention to detail guy. Everything that he touches, he improves. And Jeff, thank, we can't thank you enough for all 21 years of service now at this point. Who here was born in 1985? <laughs> Who here wasn't born in 1985? I think a lot of people in here were not born in 1985. Well, let's bring up our next person we want to recognize for service wars. We're going to take a pretty big leap from 20 years to 35 years. Oh. Lauren Crumwoody, come on up. Lauren was hired in 1985, July 6, 1985, promoted to engineer in 1994. One of the longest working City of Santee employees at 35 years. And what's kind of cool is he's got a single digit employee number. Employee 0007. We should cut off one of those zeros and make it be 007. It's pretty amazing. Uh, Lauren's got an incredible ability to assess anything mechanical, take it apart, fix it, and not have parts left over, which is very different than what I when I do something. Um, Lauren is a doer. He has spent his entire career finding issues around the fire stations on a fire apparatus and fixing them. Anything that we needed, Lauren was there. Voluntarily, happily, just working his tail off day in, day out, and always had a smile on his face. So Lauren, I, I can't thank you enough for 35 years. It's an incredible testament. He's now retired, and we're happy that your uniform still fits, Lauren. <laughs> retired. 
<laughs> and I'll, I'll be willing to bet that Lauren was actually probably doing some project up until about 15 minutes before he got here. <laughs> and that concludes my part. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, Justin. Very nicely done. Um, we're moving on to the promotions. Um, first up, I'd like to call up Justin Matsushita, who was promoted to Deputy Fire Chief on August 20th, 2020. Chief Matsushita was hired April 13th, 2001, and has held every rank in the fire department up to De Deputy Fire Chief. Uh, Chief Matsushita is a former Firefighter of the Year. He's in charge of department operations and, it, and equally important is the city EOC during the last year and a half. Justin has played an instrumental role in the success and the successful response to uh, all that it has been going on in the last year and a half. Uh, Justin for many years has been a major player in EMS starting from as a captain through his battalion chief days and continues that in his current position as deputy chief. Uh, we've gone through some pretty major changes and expect some pretty major changes in the near future and that is uh, dissolution of CSA 69. If you all are familiar, we, our ambulance service is part of the county and is, is encompassed with Lakeside Fire District as CSA 69. And CSA 69 is controlled by the county with an advisory committee from our local agencies for which uh, Councilwoman Koval is the chair. We've been pushing really hard to take control and bring local control local and spearheading that fight over the last several years is uh, Chief Matsushita. It's made a huge difference and I think we're all, everybody in this room is very excited for the future and to see us become of us take charge of our own destiny. So uh, that along with countless other things throughout his career um, service with the, the city. He also has attained his 20 years of service last year. So we, instead of recognizing him a minute ago, we added that to this uh, section. Congratulations, Chief Matsushita. Uh, your son, Trey, will be pinning you. And uh, thank you for all your service. Aaron Bagley, a battalion chief. Aaron was, uh, was hired on August 22nd of 2002 and promoted to battalion chief of, on August 20, 2020. 21. Wow. On 21. Sorry, mistake. Gave you an extra year there. Uh, Aaron promoted to engineer in 2008 and captain in 2014 and battalion chief in 2021. Aaron is currently in charge of our EMS and pub ed. And as I just stated, EMS is a humongous task at this point. It is, it is a, a monumental amount of work as we plan for the future and move into the future of a new service model potentially and all that is um, taking control of our own destiny. And that is a monumental task and Aaron is, is accepting it and moving forward just Amazingly. Let's see, Aaron's had held many positions throughout his career with the fire department. Uh, he has been on a, the paramedic committee, he's handled telestaff, the health, safety, and wellness committees. I could go on and on all day. Um, Aaron, thank you all. Thank you for so much for your service and uh, congratulations on your promotion to battalion chief. Your wife, Sonia, will come up and pin you.
these last two have had so many promotions in their career, almost everybody in their family's got an opportunity to put them <laughs> in one time or another. Next, I'd like to invite Captain Romero to come forward. All right, Tony Romero was uh, hired it on uh, April 1st, 2012, promoted to captain on September 3rd, 2020. I got that date right, right? Okay. Um, he promoted to engineer December 17th in 2017. Um, recently, Tony promoted to a temporary acting position on March of 2020 and then permanent position on September 3rd, 2020. Uh, Tony's a former firefighter of the year in 2016. He is currently responsible for department EMS training, patient care reporting, and narcotics. He is a CPR program manager and a the city AED manager. He has also assisted with operation collaboration, delivering vaccinations throughout the county for 14 weeks he was deployed. Different times, but 14 weeks in two week periods. Amazing job, Tony. We have, uh, throughout the, the county and the zone, we've been recognized, our department has been recognized several times um, based on your contributions to that effort, which was very impressive. Uh, we'll, we'll hear more about that uh, shortly. Uh, congratulations, Tony. I've had uh, the pleasure of working you with, with you for a long time. In, in EMS, you're in, in training. I remember as the EMS captain, you giving you assignments and just not having to worry about whether they were done or not. It was, you've done an amazing job from day one, and uh, everybody should be very proud of you. And you've given me the honor of pinning you today, which thank you. Invite Matt Brown up. Matt was promoted to engineer on September 17, 2020. He was hired on June 18, 2015. Uh, he was a former firefighter of the year 2018 and has held a ton of responsibilities throughout the department, including EMS. He is a paramedic committee member, a mentor, and a preceptor and he was a key player in the countywide gross de decontamination policy and i can speak to that a little bit more if you don't mind so uh, a few years ago two or three years ago um, matt was very passionate about decontamination i believe uh, captain leaks was probably involved with you with your efforts to to a large part um, that passion drove Matt to create some internal policies that we adopted and that were so widely accepted, they moved on to the zone level and the county level. So um, some version of Matt's idea has grown into something every firefighter in this county follows and it's, it's just a testament to what you're all about, Matt, and your dedication, so uh, that's fantastic. Uh, today, pinning Matt, his engineer badge is his wife Jessica and daughters Brooklyn and Emerson. Or just one. <laughs> Emerson. Oh, I'll hold her too. Strike one. She's drooling, huh? Now? She should be in she should be in advertising with those bright eyes. <laughs> Next, I'd like to invite Curtis Wilson. Oh, Curtis. Okay, Curtis was hired in April on April 24th, 2014, and promoted to engineer on uh, May 13th, 2021. Um, Curtis is another one of those has had tremendous impact in this department and held several positions throughout his years with the fire department. 
He's a paramedic preceptor and evaluator. Um, he's had many roles on the paramedic committee, including ride-alongs, ambulance builds, and new hire orientations. And he's also been the lead for the, uh, the union's pancake breakfast, which is always a big hit within our community. So uh, amazing career so far. Congratulations on your promotions. I have one quick thing to say. Um, when I had the, the honor of calling Curtis to, to let him know that he, was, he got promoted to engineer, um, it was a very special moment for me because his wife happened to be nearby. And uh, I'll speak to this for everybody that was promoted. It's not just Curtis up here, it's Curtis and his wife and his family because being promoted in this fire department is no easy task. The amount of time and effort that is put into it, the amount of time and effort away from your families that is put into the promotion process is definitely a team effort. Um, the sacrifices that families make, including your wives and your kids, take it, you being away from them, uh, each one of you that have been promoted have sacrificed tremendously. Your wives and your families have sacrificed tremendously. And uh, when, I, when I called Curtis, his wife happened to be there and he asked to put her on speakerphone so you both heard the news at the same time because I think you're both in it together and it was an accomplishment for both of you. So uh, with that, Curtis, we'll have Jacqueline come up and give you your, your, your bench. move on and give up uh, the lectern I want to recognize really quickly because they were both mixed into the promotional process uh, Chief Matt Street if you'll stand and Matt Brown where did you go Matt uh, we kind of mixed those into the promotions uh, Chief Matt Sheeta earning his 20-year pin congratulations special congratulations for that and Matt Brown I didn't mention in his that he uh, also received his five-year pin last year so uh, we didn't want to miss out on those two announcements. So thank you both for your service. <laughs> Jeff Hernandez, what time did you get? Sorry. She could have just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> So as you guys witnessed there, putting, putting a badge on these jackets isn't the easiest thing to do. It's a little bit of a challenge. They try to make it easier by putting these little metal rings on there that you slip it through, but the fabric underneath tends to block the lower one, and so it's usually kind of a struggle to get them on and off, which is why we don't to take them on and off very often. Uh, this next por portion is going to be really short, but I have the privilege of not, not administering an award, but just introducing you to somebody. So Mario, if you can come forward, please. Mario, I mentioned earlier, he's the newest member of the fire department, and uh, um, he's, he's part of our mechanic uh, crew. So we used to have a crew of one and a half, essentially. We had a full-time mechanic and a part-time mechanic, and we've also did some moonlighting with some uh, mechanic interns from uh, the various local community colleges, trying to find different ways that we could try to kind of accomplish a little bit more work with not a very large budget. And uh, we finally were able to get a second full-time mechanic position approved. And so um, we did a pretty extensive search and we um, ended up hiring Mario Camacho. He brings to us a very extensive uh, experience. We stole him from the city of San Diego where he worked for the last couple of years. And he has all together, he's worked at Chevy dealer for I believe it's 36 years. Great. But he, he brings with us, brings to us about 40 years of experience in the automotive industry. 
Um, so he's been a tremendous uh, asset in the three weeks that he's been here. Um, he's fit in very well. He's got a very eager personality, uh, very, very uh, easygoing personality and easy to get along with. Wants to help and wants to get in there and do work. And uh, we welcome him to, to the crew and the family. So welcome, Mario. We're Thank lucky you. to have you on board. And next, we're going to bring back up Aaron Bagley for uh, Civil Wars. All right, I'm going to give out a um, uh, award for exemplary performance. Can I have Tony Romero come up here? <clears throat> um, as Chief Garla stated during, uh, it was called Operation Collaboration, and we administered uh, vaccines to the community. And we talked about it before we committed to doing it, before we committed our personnel to vaccinate the community. Um, we talked about was this the right thing for us to do? And we felt pretty strongly that helping ease or end this pandemic was dependent on getting a population vaccinated. So we committed some of our personnel to it. And the discussions happened, like who would be good? Well, we could think of nobody better than Tony Romero to lead this for our organization. And he took a tremendous lead with throughout the county in administering vaccinations. As was already said, tremendous feedback from around the county on the job Tony did. And he's just, a guy we can count on to do the job to the highest level every single time. And um, appreciate your efforts, Tony. You represented our agency to, to the entire county. And um, you know, you helped, you helped ease the suffering around there by helping people get vaccinated. So appreciate your effort, efforts, appreciate you, um, appreciate how much we can count on you. So thank you, Tony. some certificates of accommodation. Is David Robinson here? I know he was working today. David, come on up, please. <clears throat> David Robinson is one of our firefighter paramedics. We're gonna recognize him with a certificate of accommodation for an aerosolized ambulance decontamination concept that um, David came up with. First responders were really challenged with COVID, as you can imagine, not only with continuing to deliver care, but also, um, stay safe, uh, keep each other safe, safe, keep the ambulances clean, keep the stations clean, and then go home safely. Um, we had a lot of different um, ideas. Um, it's one thing to have an idea, but it's a whole other thing to uh, take that idea, do research on it, um, put it into practice, develop it, train people, and that's exactly what David did. So David came up with this idea to clean the ambulances when we had a positive COVID patient um, he did research on the solution to use that would kill viruses, bacteria, that would keep the equipment safe. Um, they utilized a paint sprayer to help um, distribute the, the cleaning agent. Um, and they made a video on how to do it safely and effectively. So um, for David to do that as a, one of our newer employees, it just, uh, it just shows we have really special people here doing special things. And we wanted to recognize David for um, the concept that he came up with and for seeing it through on his own. So, David, thank you for what you bring to the organization, and uh, we're going to recognize you with this plaque. All right, can I have uh, Nelson Smith and Austin Thomas come up, please? Is Austin? Austin's on a call? Okay. I, um, my kids go to a uh, school with Nelson's oldest son, Noah, so I get to see him often. And I saw him this morning and he came up to me and said, my dad's getting an award today. <laughs> uh, that made me feel really good because he is so proud of you and so are we Nelson, so that was, that was pretty neat. Um, we're gonna recognize Nelson in Austin with a certificate of accommodation for the Station 4 roof training pop prop that uh, they really single-handedly built themselves. So. Vertical ventilation is when we uh, cut a hole in a roof of a burning building uh, to release hot gases and smoke. And it's one of the um, most dangerous, but also uh, critical things that we are tasked with doing on a structure fire. 
Um, it takes a lot of coordination, um, and uh, really it, it can uh, save someone's life. It will help the crew interior. And it sounds uh, funny, we're gonna cut a hole in a roof. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do that to help save the building. So we sacrifice a little bit to, to save the building. So um, it's a task that we, uh, we do, and we do it uh, safely but aggressively. And it takes a lot of training. And it's hard to get that training. We have uh, saws that we use. We can write chalk on the, the ground. We can drive over to the uh, tower and um, cut. We have smaller props, but it's really hard to get that training for such a critical thing that we do and, and for something that's so dangerous. So, um, well, Nelson and Austin um, had an idea, this concept, to build a, a root prop to help train on this. And they saw some uh, metal at one of the public works yards and they came up with this idea, and just similar to David, um, they saw it through. They um, themselves were able to work with other departments in the organization uh, and had a, a, a lot of support, which is, which is great. And they welded and constructed this, how, how big is it, 20, uh, I don't remember the exact dimensions. It's huge. Uh, it's at station four, it's cemented into the ground it can go to different pitches, it can go to flat, it can go all the way vertical if we want to um, you know, keep that space open when we're not trading it, but um, a, a really, really valuable tool for us to better serve our community. So uh, Nelson and Austin came up with this idea, they constructed it and welded everything themselves, they repurposed the equipment, they worked well into the night, many, many nights, and they did this project that otherwise would have taken up to a year in a matter of months. So we wanted to recognize Nelson Smith and Austin Thomas for uh, what they bring to the organization and what they do. And um, Lauren Crumwoody uh, retired and uh, I, I think we lucked out with getting two guys like this to replace you with fixing stuff. So um, we're fortunate to have Nelson and Austin and we want to recognize them both with a certificate of accommodation. So thank you. Aaron Bagley's gonna come back up to uh, give the next award. So this is the final award of the evening. Um, this is our Firefighter of the Year Award. And you know this award this award's special because it is you're nominated and selected by your peers. So um, it doesn't come from us, it doesn't come from the chief officers, it comes from your peers. And so um, I've worked for, with this firefighter for a long time and just some personal, on a personal note, for me, I take a great pleasure in watching somebody grow and develop it um, as a firefighter and a person. And it's, it's been cool to watch this individual um, and his passion for the fire service and to see that play out year over year and his contributions grow and grow and him to make it truly big impact on our organization and um, it's, it's special to watch and it's, I'm really proud to watch it and it's made a, he's made a tremendous impact on the, on the thoughts and the morale and the attitudes of our people and just, a, just a, like we said we had the, uh, Lauren Crumwoody over here who was one of our builders and one of our, our creators around here well this gentleman he is helping to take, that, take the place uh, of Lauren. Um, some of the uh, things said by his peers. Um, humble, empathetic, trusting, assists with staffing issues, student of his craft, knowledge and skills held in high regard, pride in fleet maintenance, reorganizing the shop, constantly welding, working nonstop building the ventilation prop. I'm giving away some of this here. So save the department thousands of dollars through that and supports our department mission statement. Um, this is one of our engineers. Um, I'm happy to work with him. It's a pleasure to have him. Um, Nelson Smith. Come on. <laughs> 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 
So uh, I normally talk a lot, and everybody knows it. There's, uh, I'm the guy that on a call you got to go find because I'm talking to somebody that has nothing to do with the call. So um, I don't really have a lot to say. They uh, appreciate it. They uh, really, it's the guys. They uh, they motivated me to push into new levels, and we we really have hired some amazing guys and. You know, this is coming up on 15 years for me here, and it feels like yesterday I got my badge, and this will be 20 years in the fire service, and I feel better now than I did then, and it's gone by in a flash, and it's really the guys around you that, that pick you up and that motivate you, and it is the family, and it's what I live for, so I thank everybody else. They're the one that did it. <laughs> Congratulations, Nelson. Well, well deserved. Uh, there's a saying that in the fire service, we have 300 years of tradition unimpeded by progress, essentially meaning that we're very slow to adapt and change. Um, we hold on to a lot of practices simply because that's the way we've always done it, right? How many, how many of you heard that one in the last week? Right? I mean, that's something that's said pretty frequently in the fire service. Um, our, fire, our fire department is different. Um, our people are different. We have a very talented and passionate group of people, and you've met a lot of them here tonight, and we acknowledge a lot of them here tonight. Um, with this group of people, we're going to continue to set the bar higher, and we're going to continue to be that impetus for change in the fire service. We'll continue to strive to provide the best service that we can for the citizens. Thank each and every one of you for the little contributions and the big contributions that you've made throughout your entire careers. Thank you for choosing to be part of an important part of our amazing team as we continue to progress and make change in the future. Thank all of you for showing up this afternoon and celebrating all of our wonderful people. Uh, I encourage you, if you didn't already pick one up on your way in, on your way out, pick up one of the programs right on the table right by the front door. And uh, also, the Santee Firefighter Association is hosting an event over at the Carlton Oaks Country Club. It's open to all of you and you're welcome to attend. Uh, just take your time getting over there just so they can get set up, but uh, it's going to be immediately following this event. Uh, if you need address, we can get that for you. I don't have it off the top of my head, but call to Oaks Country Club. It's going to be basically right across the street from Station 5 if you're familiar with that area. But thank you all for attending this afternoon. We appreciate it, and we'll hopefully see you again next year.